Welcome to True Crime and Coffee Time. I have Da Vinci's sugar-free cookie dough. I've been waiting forever to open this because I'm going to take this one to work with me. I don't know if you can see. There's not too much left, and I have some lemonade packets at work. So I figured strawberry, watermelon, lemonade could be good. So I'm going to rinse out this pump, get this clean, and get going. Open a sugar-free cookie dough. So I decided to make the executive decision to take it to work so I could open the cookie dough. So this is going to work with me. Maybe I'll uh, make some lemonades. But it's not a whole lot in there, so it should last me the weekend, maybe two weekends, but let's get going. My husband took my almond milk upstairs, so we're going to have to make this a little different. So I actually used a generic K-cup. This is sure we'll use that. So we're just going to pour that in there. Usually I'd add almond milk, but my husband took upstairs and I am not going, I'm not going upstairs for it. So I'm just actually going to do some creamer in here just to cut some of that protein coffee taste. And then let's pick our protein. I think I'm gonna go with maybe vanilla today. So Truvani sent me these like little gift packets. So I actually got vanilla chai, which I've been excited about. And I feel like a van vanilla chai, ooh, vanilla chai cookie dough would be like a snickerdoodle maybe. On top of my protein coffee, I'm gonna put a little bit of Flavor God's buttery cinnamon roll. Uh, you want a discount there's a code linked but I love the sweet ones to put on coffee for just a little extra that's not like added sugar or calories so here she is <clears throat> let's take a little sippy oh my gosh I'm not even exaggerating that's like such a good chai flavor all right true crime and coffee time today is Thursday March 23rd the Hart family crash continues. Uh, this is part, what part are we on? Four. <laughs> the abuse continues. At least four additional allegations of child abuse by the Harts were reported while they were in Minnesota, but never investigated. More followed when the family actually moved to Oregon and state authorities became aware of what happened in Minnesota as well. And in 2013, they kind of began interviewing and assessing the hearts, uh, friends and families and those around them. They told shocking stories of poor treatment, malnourishment that these children endured. When the children were interviewed, however, they did not report anything. No abuse, current or past, nothing. Jen told authorities any such reports were the result of ten intolerance towards lesbian children and six black children. And... Lesbian mothers and six black children, and that's the only way this could be coming up forward. But the allegations followed the family and escalated until their final move. This time, now they're in Washington. The couple's neighbors had several disturbing incidents with the children, including one when Hannah jumped out of her bedroom window and pounded on their door at 1.30 in the morning, pleading, please don't make me go back. They're racist and they abuse us. The neighbors also said Devante sometimes came to the door begging for food, asking them not to tell their mothers. The neighbors contacted CPS, who made two attempts to contact the Hearts. The second on March 26, 2018. So tomorrow we're going to continue with part five, which I do believe is the last actual part of the story. And then part six will be a quote or some sort of statement since it is the, the weekend. But... I feel like this is one of those cases we could have went through an entire calendar over because there's just so many different levels and so many different variations and stories and quotes. So come back tomorrow for the final part. And uh, hopefully, uh, though it doesn't have a happy ending, hopefully justice is served in the final part. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for new crew. I'll see you guys tomorrow for more true crime and coffee time.